Hi, I'm Kartha Gewert, and this is L Bubble. He's tired. He's been alive since the 2010s. Welcome back to Candy Throughout the Decades. Right now, we are checking out 1960, and I think you'll be amazed by the marketing, the gimmicks, all of the things that our society have done to get kids really fond of sugar. <laughs> In 1960, we had a uh, gendered candy. This is called It's a Boy by L. Bubble. And what better way to celebrate a baby than to have a sweet treat that looks like... Can I have a knife? Looks like a knife? No. This is what you get at your gender reveal party. This is what you get when the fetus has a weenus in the 60s. This was okay then, would it be okay now? Hey kids, would you like a cigar? Look, it's a boy. They're candy cigars. Fun for the whole family. Wow. It says in the description here, L Bubble Bubble Gum Cigars are made harder to keep the shape. No refunds for hardness is their catchphrase. What? Yeah, it's like, hey, you're pregnant. No refunds on what I just did. You want a cigar? Bring the kids. The kids will be able to eat this and the Italian grandfather will be able to be like, you talking to me? It's a good way to get your kids practicing. So this is gum. Mm. Tastes like blue raspberry. Mm. It tastes like Fruit Loops. It doesn't say anything anywhere on the packaging about the flavor. Sorry, dropped some. Yeah, it just tastes like um, Fruit Punch, Fruit Loops, cotton candy. Fun for the whole family. For your kids, for your mom, for your grandma. If my mom came home and I was like, what are you looking at? She wouldn't like that. Moving on in 1960, 1963, the Astropop. Designed to be like a three-stage rocket because what were we obsessed with? Space. What did we do in the summer of 69? We landed on the moon! Wait, it was the moon, right? Yeah. Okay, just making sure. Even though I'm a 90s kid, I remember these. I remember them tasting pretty darn good. I remember them being very hard to get into. Purple. Bruh, this thing looks pretty shoddy for a, you know, a professional product. But we have here, cherry, is that cherry? Maybe. Cherry, passion fruit, pineapple. I mean, that tastes really artificial. Ah, this like little side thing here, it's sharp. I just licked it and I think I cut my tongue. It's good though, I could see a kid enjoying it, but yeah, it's just very artificial. Ooh, millions of these babes have been sold. I find them awful, but if I was a kid, I'm not gonna say no. If you watched the first installment of this, you would know that prior to the 1960s, when they said sour, they didn't mean it. But this one here, the now and later extreme sour fruit chews, claim to be quite sour. Now, it's 2020. We know what sour is supposed to taste like. So there's water Watermelon, sour cherry, and sour apple, even though it kind of looks like just watermelon and apple. Sour and watermelon, I feel, are like the best combo. So we're gonna try her out. In the 1960s, this was totally spectacular. Did they say that? The 60s babies are boomers now, right? Bless the boomers. This was their candy. When my dad watched the first video of this, he was like, can you make a video on what boomers ate for candy? I think we're there. I think this is the boomer candy. Do they find this sour? Oh no, I hate when the packaging gets stuck to the gummy. When I was a kid and this used to happen to me, I uh, actually didn't mind eating the paper. I was just so impatient. I was just like, well, there's paper on there. I don't know, a little paper never hurt nobody. It's a really fun consistency. It's like gum, but it's not gum, it disintegrates. It's not very sour. I can see living in the 60s and like compared to the candy they had 1890 to 1950, this is definitely the most sour thing yet, but it's not like extreme. And the watermelon flavor, not very good. I don't know if you guys are old enough for this, but like Tutti Frutti, it tastes the way I feel Tutti Frutti would smell. This is so good. Jelly Tots. It says since 1881 here, which would make it the oldest candy, but I guess these really popped off in the 60s. I used to beg my mom to take me to London Drugs and I'd be like, yo, we need those jelly tots. There's just something special about the way they taste. Mm. Most candy has a very, I would say, putrid aftertaste, but jelly tots taste so good from beginning to end that even my child palate was like, this is delicious. These got discontinued and I could not find them. There's lemon, lime, black currant, orange, and strawberry. There's everything you can eat. Like who would make a black currant? Whoever thought of jelly tots is a genius. This is a 10 out of 10 candy since 1960. If you've never tried jelly tots, you gotta. I might be hyping them up too much, but they are objectively sweet as candy. This seems like an ad, but like I really like them. Hey, welcome to the 70s. What do you think, L-Bubble? You survived. You did it. We weren't really good with our camera work back then. Welcome to the 70s. I was considering doing my hair like all out like the 70s, but I'm sure some people had straight hair back then too. It's the summer in the 70s and wow, strawberry filled gums. Okay, my dog just farted in the midst of the 70s. Disgusting. Oh, also, the bell bottoms are out. Pretty cool, pretty comfy. 
strawberry filled gums. Like how fun is that? This is I think our first candy throughout the decades where like we have a beautiful strawberry that is like filled to the brim with strawberry juice. It's more like jelly. But yeah, this is like artificial, but it's artificial in a good way. Like it's well-rounded. I love the like, cute little like dots in it. If I was a kid in the seventies, this is all I would need. Just delicious jelly center. There is not a single real flavor in here, but that being said, it really popped off in the seventies with this one. Wow. This here, she's Groove Rooney. She is a pop rock dip. So it's like a sucker that you dip into pop rocks, which pop when you eat them and it comes with a tattoo. We're going for rebellion here, okay? We're going for counter culture. And what could be more counter culture at the time than a temporary tattoo. I wonder what they would have thought of me for my tattoo. Probably would have been like, ew. It's so funny how times are a changing and we got to work our way up to regular tattooage with a beautiful temporary tattoo that is stuck in the candy. Look at this. It's like a screaming skull dude. So some of the tattoo like didn't really fully pull off, but I mean, it's been bathing in candy for what years? So can't expect too much. I'm gonna put it right here. How long did you do this? When I was a kid, I would just do it for as long as possible. Cause like I loved temporary tattoos and I just wanted it to be on me forever. And I thought that the longer I held this, the longer it would stay on, but apparently that kind of ruins it. So, okay. oh, it's dripping all over me. I was like, is L Bubble licking me? No, it's just dripping all over the place. Why not enjoy our snack while we wait? I didn't know Pop Rocks were this old. Suck on this. Sure looks like one. It's very faint. It tastes like a perfect Coca-Cola bottle with like an ambiguous pop rock flavor. It's not cherry, it's not strawberry, it's not blueberry, it's just sugar. Pop and sugar. That's pretty rad-tacular. I like that. How long were you in prison for? 17 years. I would get this. <clears throat> you would make fun of me? Yeah. Well, it's always gonna be the 70s to me. Everlasting Gobstopper. Do you remember watching Willy Wonka and then they're like eating these Gobstoppers that like last forever? Like, wasn't that the most magical scene? I mean, it was for me. Like, I was like, wow, a candy that lasts forever? And like these pups, they last. They last a while. And I don't like Jawbreakers and that's essentially like the format of this. Like if you cut it in half, there's like all the different layers of flavor, so it keeps giving you surprises. It takes forever to eat. Everything inspired by Willy Wonka tastes really good. I don't know if that is no coincidence, but like this candy, the dudes in the lab were like, this has to bang and it bangs. It's groovy. It's radtacular. It's spooktacular. It's doo doo dacular. Yeah, Led Zeppelin. <laughs> Bottle caps, 1972, made by Willy Wonka himself. I've actually never had one of these. Apparently they popped off. Terry here just said that they're amazing. I can't wait. Oh, these look like trash. These look like powder candy. I hate powder candy. I hate rockets. They explode in your mouth. No, they do not. 10. Shut up. Nine. You gotta be kidding me. Eight. Seven. Stop it. I'm six, trying to keep the peace. Five, four, three, two. Oh, ooh. Ooh, these are really good. Told you. Mm. Mm. It's a little fizzy. This tastes exactly like cola. Like it's really good. My favorite candy ever was discontinued, I think in the late 90s. It's called So Delicious. Soda sensation. So, so delicious. Ooh. And I was like, where will I ever find that taste again? That flavor? Look no further than this. Except So Delicious were gummy candies and this is hard candy. So not as good, but like, hey, I could eat a lot of these. Root beer, cherry, grape, cola, and orange. This is a good roster of flavors. Sometimes you get like some crappy flavors in there. Like, you know, when you get like the yellow gummy candy and you're like, I don't know about that, but like, this is like all good. It's all the hits because usually orange is like a crappy flavor if it's like fruit flavor, but orange soda, bangs. As my dad always says, that's her. That means it's done. Oh. That's like their slang from the seventies. Oh. That's her, <laughs> you thirsty? Do you have enough moolah to go pick up a Hot Wheels? I'm a boomer, I don't know. Hello. It's the 80s and I've lost control of my life. Got this tattoo in the 70s, we'll never forget. This is so tacky, I just absolutely, ooh, this era. Whew, I thought the 90s, well, I mean, we'll see the 90s, but I thought that was bad. This is pretty bad. But the candy, the candy is just like my outfit. The push pop, can you believe it? I used to like go to Blockbuster whenever my parents wanted to go rent a movie. And I was like, please, can I have a push pop? Please, I want one so bad. Like how fun is this packaging? How fun is the opportunity to just ooh, ooh. Now the problem with push pops, the fatal flaw that no kid ever thought of, because why would you? You're just a little kid. You push it up, you suck on it, you put it back down, you put the lid in, and then your 
spit mixes with the sugar makes a really sticky topping and it adheres to the push pops. You have to like, ah! and like my friends in the early 2000s had to get their dads to hit this thing with a hammer to dislodge their push pops because you had to be able to go to school like this. Oh, who, me? I'm just, you know, got my candy on deck. Strawberry flavor, one of the best ones you can get. The flavors are really improving. The artificialness of it is melding with it trying to not be artificial and the flavors are getting better. It's gonna go back in here. I'm gonna put the lid on and this thing's never coming out of here again. That's just the way it works. This was the next best thing to the push pop, the ring pop. These came out in the 80s. Can you see like the trends? How candy is evolving. The flavors are evolving. The gimmicks are evolving. And now we wear candy as a ring and look how beautiful this thing is. Isn't it stunning? It's an activity, an accessory, a pastime, a hobby. You could like collect all of the different kinds of ring pops. I would wear a pink ring pop with my friends and be like, I'm the pink power ranger. And this is how I get my power. Yeah. You know, really fun. Oh, blue raspberry watermelon. What a fantastic combination of flavors. Mm. Okay, really? <laughs> Can we like chill for a minute? Artificially flavored, yes, but it's the best kind of flavor. Like this flavor awakens a child's senses. And no wonder kids like didn't want to eat healthy because like there's nothing in the real world that happens in nature that would taste this good. Mm, very nice. Like when these first came out, I bet kids were like, it's a ring that my grandfather got me. Leave my ring alone. What we just viewed there was the cutting edge. This is more um, a cow tail, a caramel apple cow tail. Really fun flavor profile. Unlike hard candy, this is soft. This is a different journey. The outer area is caramel. The inside is supposed to be the apple flavor. Chewy caramel wrapped around a cream center. So it's apple cream. It tastes exactly like a caramel apple, but I just had a ring pop. Like, what do you want me to do? It's not as good. That ring pop took me to another dimension. Whereas this is worldly. This is as good as worldly can get. 1980s, you got some candy you can really set your watch to. It's the 90s. I got the choker. I want you to note that this says kickers on it because for some reason people wore text on their little tank tops and I don't know what that kind of stuff meant or said. I've got the belt buckle on the side and shoved in here because for some reason, everything we did in the 90s looked really, really bad but we did it anyway. I'm not supposed to be wearing high-waisted jeans in the 90s, but I'm just really not comfortable right now like doing what the 90s girls did and like just have my belly hanging out. We've got nerds rope. This is a candy rope covered in nerds. I guess they were trying to find an equally fun delivery system in the 90s for nerds because you know, they're a classic. Everybody loves them. I see these on a lot of candy channels. Like these are actually having a moment right now. Like they're quite popular and I've never actually had one before. The nerds are flying off the everywhere. That is very sweet. That's a berry gummy covered in nerds. It is so sweet. As a kid, I would love it, but like, oh, yeah. Nerds are always delicious. I feel like this is overkill. I feel like the delivery system of it is just way too much. It does suggest that you tear and share. I highly recommend that if you're about to have one of these because all this for one kid, you gotta be out of your mind. It's too much. These are a classic. I distinctly remember going to baseball games with my dad and begging for these caramel apple pops. It is like a green, notoriously hard to get out of the package. The package is completely stuck to the caramel. It's like soft, chewy caramel on a hard candy green apple sucker. Mm -hmm. Very artificial tasting, yes, but very, very delicious. And for a kid, like the mix of the two textures together, like it's just, my mouth is like watering so much like just thinking about it. Mine's so watering. Good. Yeah, right? Cause it's like so sour. Your mouth just starts watering. You're like, mm. In the nineties, they really got the sour candy going. The nerds here were way more sour than the nerds I've had in the past. And this is like, this is very sour. I get why I liked them. They're very good. We've had all sorts of candy gimmicks. This candy, the Unicorn Pop, has its very own urban legend. Rumor has it that this sucker is made by actual unicorns. Ew. That is just not good. Remember the suckers you get at the dentist that just weren't good? Dentists gave you sucker? Yeah, yeah, they did. <laughs> what were they thinking? The dentists also gave me chokers in the 90s, the perfect stereotypical 90s chokers, but I don't have one because like, I'm trying to forget that time in my life. This tastes like so artificial, it sickens me. It says here that this is made only using the finest ingredients. Like, what does that even mean? It says they're individually wrapped. Isn't everything individually wrapped? Yeah, it says that these are made by real unicorns who live in Candyland. We don't know if this is true, but just imagine if it was. 
was. This is so bad that you have to imagine that it's good. <laughs> we've been on quite the journey of sour, but we've never seen a package with a crying kid on it. This crying kid is named Crybaby. These are his tears. They're so sour. They make this poor little blonde boy cry. I mean, it's the 90s. We're getting pretty advanced back then. Like the candy industry, I think had fully taken over. I was watching like crazy stuff on TV. The ads were insane. So much candy, so many cool toys. Let's see. We'll make even the sweetest and toughest sour candy lover cry like a baby. Are you up to the challenge? Do I look like I'm crying? You look like you're disappointed. It's not good. It's definitely like making my mouth water because it's so sour, but it's not like, oh, sour. You know what I mean? She was a skater boy. She said, see you later, boy. It's the 2000s. I'm wearing this horrible, I mean, hey, at least there's a skort, right? Skort and chain. Pretty cool. First thing we're gonna look at in the 2000s is the candy money. Ah! I've never seen this before. Yeah, candy money for the kids. Edible money. This kind of looks like to me to be like yen or something. Mm -hmm. You know how they have like bigger denominations of money? Funny money it's called. You know you've always wanted to do it. Now you can eat your funny money. Apparently there were some conversations I missed out on in the 2000s about eating your funny money. I just wanna eat my funny money. Whoa, that is not funny. That is not funny at all. What the <sighs> Potato starch, vegetable oil, emulsifier, flavoring sweetener. Why does it taste like cardboard? Look at this. Yeah. Pockets looking funny when you got that funny money. That's edible, but it's not good. Ooh. Now instead of like gimmicks with the flavor to back it up, we're looking at straight gimmicks now. Rubik's cube, candy cube. Wait, are you sure that's candy? Yeah. Wait, you just open her up. I was gumming it. It's not a Rubik's Cube you can solve. It's a good way to like, you know, make it seem like you're kind of a nerd, but you just got candy in here. This would be a really good place to like hide stuff. Maybe that's like what most of the cost was, is this. No, dude. No. <laughs> the 2000s, it was very dry, wasn't it? It was a fun time to grow up. Like we had Y2K, we were freaking out. We had Britney and Christina, but all our candy was pretending to be something else. We were all pretending to be something else. This tastes like a banana's butt. I remember the time in the 2000s. I tried an E Fruity mini burger for the first time. Yet another gimmick. Is it the best tasting candy you're ever gonna have? No, but it looks like a burger and it's really fun to eat. The point of candy in the 2000s was to take something to school that would make the other kids jealous. With this, you could take off the different layers and like show it to people. It was a toy as much as it was candy. And you're seeing a pattern in the 2000s here. Toy, candy, this is what we're getting. And like, this doesn't taste anywhere near as bad as the candy money or the Rubik's Cube candy. It's actually pretty good. I like it. As far as nostalgia goes, when I saw another kid on the playground with one of these, I lost it. I was like, where did you get that? What is that? And they were like, uh, it's candy spray. And I was like, where did you get it? They were like the gas station. I went home. I wrote in my diary about it. I was like, dear God, please give me candy spray. Like it was blasphemous. It really was. Like I wanted candy spray so, so badly. Like just the idea of like the, for some reason, this delivery device absolutely captivated me. Oh, oh, it's so good. Blue raspberry. This is very, very sour. My mouth is watering so much right now from the sour that I can barely talk. A very fun way to make friends. You know what I mean? Like if you had one of these and you were just kind of like bragging, you're like, Kuck. like someone else would be like, oh, can I have some? You'd be like, Kuck. it was very unsanitary. Whole crowd would come around and you just, Kuck. like it was just oh, so good. It is so sweet, but you just get a little coating of it on your tongue. Candy spray in the 2000s is one of the most brilliant and genius candy innovations I've ever seen. So much so that I wrote in my diary about it. So much so that we didn't live by an SO gas station and I was like, Dan, you have to take me to SO, please. And like, I'd always be like, Dad, like, you need some gas or what, huh? So he'd be like, yeah, there's a shell here. And I'd be like, no, we gotta go to Esso. I gotta get the candy spray. I've seen her type before. She's a 2010. She's a 2010. Girl, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So this is uh, how I would have dressed in 2010 if I was a girly girl. However, I was emo and I just wore uh, Vans and American apparel, but some things never change. We've got the slush puppy lollipop with powder candy. Kids like dipping the lollipops in some sugar. And slush puppies was a very popular Slurpee brand. We call them Slurpee. Some people call them slushies. I remember being at the public pool once and these chads were like, how embarrassing would it be for my reputation if I got a slush puppy? And I was like, why you gotta be so serious, huh? It's just a day at the pool. Notoriously hard to open. <laughs> wow. That really smells like a blue Slurpee. I guess these are the guys who made them, so. They crystallized the slushy flavor. Ew. 
No one can make a sucker right though. The powdered sugar candy part of this, very cute. The fact that it looks like a Slurpee, it's very cute when you close it, look at that. Like that is pretty cool. The gimmicks, hey? I just can't believe it. It's so creative, it's so unique. And you know, I talked about candy spray a lot in the 90s and the 2010s, they want some too. This tastes like a melted Slurpee, really flat. It just tastes like the syrup. Like part of what makes Slurpees so good is like the ice as like a carrier. Even though I liked the other candy spray, the other candy spray was so sour that it kind of justified being served in small doses. This is just syrup that you squirt into your mouth and I'm just not a fan. 2010 had loads of surprises like this sour ooze, oozing with great taste. I feel like I saw these kicking around in the 90s. This is 2010? Maybe they upped the portion for 20 because this is way too much ooze for one kid. If my kid wanted a ton of candy, I'd get them candy spray, honestly. Candy spray is like a good amount. This, you're gonna be sick. So much plastic. And this is a weird way to eat candy. It's good. It's like the inside of a gusher, like when you bite into a gusher, except it's just the insides. It's perfectly sour to justify how sweet it is. It needs to be like sweet and salty or sweet and sour because if it's just sweet, it like gives you a headache. It does kind of taste like a very, very artificial like strawberry scent or like a cheap candle, but like pretty good. I like it because of how sour it is. Ew! We call these rockets in Canada. They're called Smarties in the States. These disgusting, powdery, gross, like <laughs> candies. And apparently they made a squeeze version of this, I can't imagine something more horrifying. Imagine like just like liquid chalk with like a hint of artificial color and there's no sourness. Like I can already tell how this is gonna go and I don't think I'm gonna like it. Squeeze candy, popular in 2010. Please be translucent. Okay, thank God. I thought it was gonna look like chalk. Yo, that's kind of good. The grains of sugar in here are so big that it kind of has like a sandy jelly consistency. Did you ever have that gum in a tube and it kind of like was grainy a little bit and then you yeah. chew it? That's exactly what this is, but it's not as good as the gum. If you like Rockets, AKA Smarties, this might be your thing. Ugh, I can't, it was so gross. Like it's good, but like, it's just not my thing. What the heck is this? So this is a toy egg, stickers, toys, and strawberry candies. They were really trying to meld toys and candy together. They wanted to sell them both at the same time. These, whoa, there's just a ton of stuff in here. We got the old instructions. Don't eat this in every language. Uh, what is this, a whistle? <coughs> Imagine giving this to your kid and then they just walk around like, hey mom, when's dinner? <coughs> you would have to take this away from them so fast. This is how Karens are made. You give your kid this once, you're never the same again after. We got some stickers in case the kid wants to put them on their binder or on the living room wall or on the carpet, on the hardwood floor. You encourage them to put it on their duotang because you know it's gonna end up all over the toilet. And we've got the strawberry candies. This is the amount of candy you're getting. They better be good. I really wanna do a video on like the candy vending machines like that have this kind of stuff and just kind of like assess the value like in what you're getting because they were everywhere at one point. But anyways, okay, strawberry candies. Raw carb, very little flavor. It's just rotting my teeth, that's all it's doing. I'm gonna try to bite through it because I'm not getting any flavor. Got it. You getting flavor now? Nope. Welcome to 2020. We're in the 2020 uniform and not a lot of stuff happened in 2020. However, the anniversary edition of the Haribo. Haribo? Haribo? The gummy candy came out with the passport mix, implying that we're all traveling around the world with our passport mix, but we aren't really traveling. We can, in fact, eat gummies at home. They're just trying to celebrate how unified they are in every country. And I thought that was kind of cute, you know? We need to feel more unified. Look at the little crocodile. Where do you think he's from? Hmm? Florida? We got the crocodile, we got the Coke, we got the, what is that, a live wire? Got the cherry, got the other live wires. Airplanes, huh, not able to take one of those in a while. Got a gummy bear. It's interesting how they call this the passport mix. I guess, hey, it's the favorite flavors from around the world. So it's Haribo's 100th anniversary. This is quite good, it's quite topical since we can't travel right now. We might as well enjoy the favorite gummies across the world. Now, this one looks the best to me, so I'm gonna try it. Oh! <laughs> hey! These guys do make good gummies. When you need a little of a pick-me-up, have some of these. That's it for this video. Evolution of candy throughout the decades. This is part two, the final part. If you guys would like to see me do an evolution 
have something else, then let me know what that is. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see me again, make sure you hit push notifications, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!